Hi guys, welcome to another class. This one we are making a Smoky Mountain landscape. The supplies you're going to want for this is something to cover your table or your surface, like newspaper or a rag. You're going to want the reference photos, your pencil and paper or your sketchbook, a canvas, your paints, your paper plate palette, your paint brushes, your paper towels to dry off your brush between washes, and then the cup of water to rinse your brush. And there's three pictures of mountains that we're going to create a composition from. So you're going to use information from one that you've picked, uh, or you can use information from all three, so that's up to you. When we start a composition, you want to give yourself a few tries. So on your sketchbook, give yourself wide squares to kind of draw out a little version, a little mini version of what you're going to do a big version of. This really helps you plan what you're going to do for your mountain landscape um, and it also helps you kind of understand how mountains look. Mountains get smaller and smaller at the horizon when they're in the distance. So the ones up front need to be the biggest and then they get smaller and smaller in a layering all the way to the back. The way we're going to make them fade away and appear as if they're very far away in the distance, we're going to be creating a gradient where the colors in the front have the most greens and yellows and the colors all the way far away in the back mountains are light blue. And that's another reason why they call it the Blue Ridge Mountains or the Smoky Mountains. When we're talking about composition, composition is everything to do about where you organize your subject matter. It's, it's all about appealing to the eye, making something interesting. You can make decisions about where you're going to put your mountains and give yourself some space for the sky. So my sky is in that upper third. After you finish drawing your mountain landscape onto the canvas and you're ready to start painting, you're going to scoop out however much paint you need onto your palette. You don't need too much paint um, to start. We're going to be kind of doing a watercolor style first, but I capped all the leftover paints because if I'm going to use some of the paints later, I want to make sure it doesn't dry out. So I'm bringing some water to my palette and I'm taking a little bit of white and a little bit of my dark blue. Just a tiny bit of that um, to make a watercolor wash and I'm just gonna create sky back there and fill in the canvas a little bit over my drawing. What I'm starting with is a really foggy foggy background all the way in the distance. Um, the reason why I'm starting with the ones in the back is because we can make it very very light and then get darker and darker with more paint as we go forward. So I'm starting out in the very background first, creating a watercolor basically, and then just making these mountains with very little paint, adding a little bit of paint as we go. So it's mostly white and my dark blue. So with every mountain, make sure it blends into white as it goes down. The paint should be very, very thin with water, dark blue, a little bit of dark blue, just a little touch, and then mostly white. In the distance, things are unclear, things are more foggy, and things will be less colorful, more blue. When you come a step closer, add more blue to your color. You can even add a touch of green or yellow to it. Um, to make it more green because the mountains get a little bit greener as they get closer. So the mountains as they get closer get darker and greener and you can use more paint. But they're still kind of fading into the fog so you want to still create a gradient where it's darkest at the top of the mountain and fades into white. Basically these mountains are gradient after gradient. The top of the mountain has the most paint and then it fades into white. So if you do this over and over again for each mountain, it looks like the mountains are disappearing into the fog, into the fog below them. At this point I made my mountain very very dark 
to make it feel like it's very close. And then I go back and I made my other mountains a little bit darker if I felt like they were too light. Before I added to the other mountains, I worked on my smoky clouds at the base of the mountain. And the way to do this, and it's very fun to do, is to take a lot of white and barely blend right alongside the color that you just made the mountain. You just add white, don't blend the whole thing, mostly go in circles along the mountain to kind of pull out some of that paint from the mountain colors and mix them around just a little bit until they start to look fluffy, fluffy like clouds. So you wanna leave white as well as you can, just leave the white and blend around it until you get that foggy look. One way that I do it is kind of circles. So I'm rolling my brush around in circles as I'm making these little clouds. When I went back to darken this mountain, I saw an opportunity. Because the mountain is so light, if I just darken the top a little bit more, it automatically makes it look like it's foggy below. So I didn't darken the whole mountain, I just darkened the tops and it made it look like there's smoky clouds right there at the bottom. It was like a little shortcut. Then I started to work on my front mountain and my front mountain will be the greenest of them all. Most of my mountains are blue with a little touch of green as it gets closer. But now this mountain in front is gonna be a dark green. It's almost like a silhouette because the light is in the distance and up close they get darker. So I'm using my dark green and I did mix in a little bit of blue, but I'm mostly using dark green and it will also fade into the fog. I'm just trying to be very careful to make sure I have space for fog below it. So if you want fog somewhere, make sure you leave space for it so that you can come in and add white and create that mist. Anywhere there is mist, there is a gradient. So I still did dark to light, making the top of my mountain the darkest, and then faded it by blending very carefully into white paint. So I think you guys are gonna like it. It's very soothing to just do gradient after gradient. It's very fun. Another thing that I enjoy doing with the mist is kind of adding colors to it. So my mist looks very purpley in the back and then it looks kind of bluish in the next mountain in, f in the middle. And then in the very front, my green mountains have green mist. You know what, you can change the color of the fog. So what I was doing was making a light, light, light blue and I started to add that to my green fog. And then I took a little bit of my green fog and added it to my purple fog in the back and I just started to mix them together until I felt like they were uniform where they felt a little bit more similar so that I didn't have green fog and purple fog and blue fog I wanted it to all make a similar feeling a similar color when you get done with the fog for all of your mountains and you're liking the way it looks now you can kind of create a horizon line of sunlight. And this is very cool. It really makes the mountains pop and stand out. What I'm mixing together is primarily yellow and white. And I'm just blending it as much as I can as close to the, the last mountain. And that's gonna create this little peekaboo of light right behind those mountains and I think it looks very nice. You guys can choose what kind of color you want the sky to be, if it's pinks or oranges or like a sunset, that's fine, you go ahead and do that. Just remember that when things are really, really far away, they're much lighter in color. I'm going with a yellow calm sky with some blue on top. I'm using sky blue. It's also called cerulean blue and I'm just mixing and blending to kind of create a gradient from yellow into sky blue on the top. And I like how it came out. For final touches, you guys can take some yellow and maybe a little bit of a light blue and dab to make these little trees. If you just kind of take a little bit of the paint and 
pad it into the mountain, you can start to create texture that looks like the tops of trees. Um, I'm not going to go into it and do all of the trees, but um, at least you can see kind of how I just tap until it starts to look a little bit like trees in there. When you are finished, you can scoop up unused paint and put it back into the containers and make sure that they go back in their Ziploc bag so that they stay wet for a future project because we like to reuse paints whenever we can. After you've scooped up all your leftover paints, you can throw away your palette and then rinse out your brushes in clean water. You want to make sure that when you push the brush to your hand, there is no paint residue in it anymore. So rinse it out really, really good with clean water and you're all set. That's it. So I hope this project was fun and that you guys enjoyed painting the Smoky Mountains. And now I also think that every time you look at the mountains, you're going to see them just a little bit differently. All right. Good job today and I'll see you next week.